Hello guys and welcome back to my Sky Factory. My name is Cobain and today we have quite an episode planned ahead of us, but the first thing I want to explain is what I've done since last episode. So, when we left off with the last episode, we got this planter working, automatically planting the seeds. Now, this has gone pretty well. We've got a lot of essence dust. I set this one up with essence as well. And I set all the other ones up, but as you will see, I've set up this one with coal, I've set up that one with redstone. I've set up this one with essence, and essence again, because we need a lot of essence to get started in this mod, really. And I've started another one with redstone, and another one with redstone. And look at this, we have almost... I'd say about half of a small chest of each. So each chest is about half full there. And that's a that's a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through, empty all this out, and chuck it in our ME system and see how much we've got. Okay, guys, I've actually run out of storage already. Um, <laughs> Just after emptying those two chests and this one just here, but it's not even empty. It's only half empty. I think we need, to, we need to fix this. I think what we need to do is we need to build a wireless access terminal for our ME system so that we don't have to run back over here every single time our inventory fills up or we need to find something. So what we need to do is, what do we need? We need a router, which isn't too hard really. Fluix Pearl, I think we can make one of those straight off the bat. Looks like we can't. Okay. What are we missing there? What are we missing? nether quartz dust okay so we have the nether quartz i'm pretty sure we sure do um all right so uh next thing on top of that we need to make another pulverizer so why don't we build another pulverizer uh it's pretty simple what have we missed there i'm pretty sure we're just missing glass but i also am pretty sure that we have glass although we do not of course we don't okay we definitely have coal and we're going to put some coal in here along with some sand, wait for the glass to cook up, and then we'll make a pulverizer. Okay, we actually have enough glass now to make it, so what we're going to do is we're just going to pop the glass in there manually. I know, manual, 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 what is that? All right, we should be able to... I think we already have the pistons, but I'm just going to make one more anyway. And we should have one of those, but just in the case that we don't, I'm pretty sure we can afford it, to be honest with you. There we are, we have another pulverizer. Let's go just chuck this one down onto our power network somewhere down here. I'll make a dedicated space for the machines a bit later, but for now we're just going to chuck it there. It's going to start powering up and we can chuck some nether quartz in there. I'll only chuck 32 in there because we don't want to run out of normal nether quartz because we need that just as much. Okay, so now we've got that cooking up. I guess we'll just have to sit and wait for it to go and then we can make our fluix dust. Another thing I want to do actually is I want to get rid of these and I want to make a powered furnace or a redstone furnace. Basically it just runs off power and it's a lot faster. So if we go redstone furnace, it should come up or if we just type redstone in, more to the point, uh, we should be able to click that in, get some glass out of here and make our machine block or machine frame. I can't remember quite what it's called, machine frame. Okay, make another reception coil. We should have some bricks however i am not quite why is it doing that i'm not quite sure if we do so we're going to search it up we only have the seared bricks so i'm going to need to get some more clay and turn that in oh wait no maybe we do have clay no we don't have any clay okay i need to get some more clay and i'll be back once i've turned it into bricks okay guys so we've just got our bricks here so all we need to do to turn those into actual bricks uh chuck it in our crafting station thing there we are we've got our redstone furnace now we just chuck this on the power like before to get it running now i'll separate that by one so i don't have to configure all this stuff and have to worry about any of it now what we can do is thank god we can rip all of these down never liked them never ever liked them they're slow they're horrible they don't work properly they use coal it's bad for the environment people bad for the environment it's, um, it's a detriment to everything. So what we're going to... I nearly fell off the side then. That was that was very close. That was very close. What we're going to do now is we're going to chug our sand in there. And you can see how much faster that is. That's just... It's just... Uh, I've been playing Feed the Beast. And uh, going back from the redstone furnace in Feed the Beast to a normal furnace in Sky Factory. It was really getting to me. So that's why I decided to build that. Now we need to get back onto our wireless access terminal. So what we need to do is we need to 
go downstairs and grab our nether quartz dust that we chucked in here before make our fluix dust and then we should be underway so we need to build that which is a fluix pearl which is fluix dust we'll just make quite a lot of that we may as well righto so we should be able to make the fluix pearl now which means we'll be able to make this definitely and we should have the me cable to make that okay now we need to make the ME wireless access terminal. This is a bit bit more um, difficult. Actually, no, it's not. This isn't difficult at all. Um, it just looks difficult. We need this conversion matrix, which is a basic processor assembly, which, as we know already, is fairly easy to make. Now, we, all we need to do... Oh, we need to smelt this up. So I'm just going to chuck this in our redstone furnace. It will take absolutely no time at all because it's a redstone furnace and not a vanilla Minecraft furnace. Would you look at that? It's already done. Rightio, so we should just be able to come back up here, put that in our system, get back into here to what we needed to make. We should be able to make that. And now what we need to do is make another travel anchor. Um, why isn't that working? That should be working there. Oh, uh, I need to make the Fluix Pearl again, of course. Now we should be right to make this one and right to make the access terminal. But I'm missing something once again, of course. Radio. so there we are. Now we should for sure be able to make this. Okay. Now it just occurred to me that I'm going to need a way to charge this, this um, terminal here. So we're going to need to make something probably like an MFE, but I will look it up and see what it's going to take to charge it. Okay, it actually looks like we can charge it in our ME controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and see just how that would work. I guess if you put that down there, it'll start charging. Nope. I'm not quite sure how it charges. But what we can do is put our ME wireless access point just here. I'll put it on top. Hopefully then it will have a bigger range. In fact, let's put it up there. I'll grab some blocks out of our ME system here. Just grab some cobblestone. Um, and I will build up here. No, I won't. Apparently I won't. No, I won't. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. There we are. Okay, so I'll just build up here and put it up the top here so we can definitely access it from our farm. There we are. So that should be connected now. And hopefully we can... Nope, no power. Okay, so we need to figure out a way to be able to chuck it in here and get it to charge. Okay, people, so it turns out we need to build an ME power relay, which isn't really too hard. So I'll just crack this one together and chuck it down, I'm guessing, on our ME network just down here, adjacent to the ME controller. So what I'm going to do... Oh, hopefully I should just be able to plonk it up here and it should become part of the network pretty quickly. Now I should be able to put it there and have it charge. There we go. Our ME wireless access terminal is charging and I will be back once it is fully charged. Actually, while we're waiting for that to happen, what we can do is we can make a wireless booster because it isn't very expensive. Expensive, my bad. There we are. See, it's pretty simple. So we can chuck that. It's a little card that we chuck into our ME wireless access point and it will give us a bit more range. Okay, so as you can see, I just put it in here. You can't physically see anything change, except you, it is a noticeable radius of boost, wireless boosting that it gives. All right, 58K is enough. We can take that down and get back to the start of the episode, which was me emptying everything from these chests here into our ME system. Okay, so I just emptied my inventory, basically emptied my inventory from well, my inventory, into the ME wireless access terminal and seems to have completely decharged it. Discharged it, I'm sorry. Um, so we're going to need to plonk it back in here and wait for it to charge a little more. This ME power relay really does put quite a bit of stress on our ME controller here because, as you can see, uh, the power level is right in the red and it doesn't seem too healthy. Hopefully we don't lose our ME system while it's charging this, because if it runs out of power, the ME system shuts down. Nothing gets imported from our chest over here, from our item creation item creation chest. That was that was a real mouthful, that one. By the way, this is working brilliantly. I added import buses on the side here, so the yellow is out outporting outputting 
into this import bus here, which is putting it straight in that ME system. And we have quite a lot of dust from that, especially dust. I haven't noticed any sand. Oh, 2,000 sand. Let's see. Uh, dust. 1,800 dust. We're, get, we're getting there. Um, soon we're going to need to start getting into some really complicated stuff because we clearly have the resources to do that now. Something else we can do while we are waiting is replace our better barrel with a deep storage unit. So the deep storage unit is basically a mine factory reloaded machine. It's really easy to make. Just make some plastic sheets up. Doesn't look like we have enough. But if we put that in there, we have enough. We just make, need to make the eyes of enders. So that is blaze powder. And I think, that, I think that's enough. There we are. So we have our deep storage unit. It's basically a better barrel. Except it stores a lot more than 64 by 64. I'm pretty sure it stores up into the billions. Uh, so we will never, ever run out of cobblestone in our life. So if I just grab a axe, an axe, axe, use our thormium axe. If we just break this one like so, it is going to cause quite a bit of lag. However, if we put cobblestone in there, it should start accepting cobblestone. There we go, and already we have nearly a thousand cobblestone in here, and it is going to go up once the automatic cobblestone generator starts feeding into here. Okay, there we are. So now we've got our deep storage unit down there. We have 3,677 cobblestone, which is quite a lot. Now, what we want to do really is we want to connect it up to our ME network so we can access it through our ME terminals. Now, to do this, we need what is called a bus, as far as I know, a storage bus. Not an import bus, a ME storage bus here. I might have made these one of these last episode, but I will just make sure I haven't before I build more. Okay, so we haven't. We've built a bunch of other things. Uh, I used that as a block before because I got pretty desperate and I cheated that one in. That was my bad. Okay, what I'm going to do is build this one up, which is pretty simple. We're going to need, an, need to make another basic processor. Let's make a couple of those because we're going to need them in the future. Jump down here, chuck them in our redstone furnace. Wait very little time for it to be done and then get back upstairs. Okay, we are back up here making our ME storage bus. We have the cables. We have plenty of cables, actually. Where are we? I've lost it again. Okay, so we should be able to make this one pretty well straight away. So I'll just see if we can... Nope, I haven't made the interface quite yet. Okay, so I've got the interface now. Should be able to make it straight up but it doesn't seem to interface. Where did the interface go? We seem to have lost the interface. It's okay, we can always just make another one, I guess. I'd rather not, but we can always just make another one and make our storage bus. Now we can just, if we can get up, we can just put this one on the, whoa, where can we put it? I guess we can put it on the top and just hook it. Oh, we should be able to put it there and hook it up straight into our ME system. There we are, and you can see we've got 5,782. Oh, there we are. Okay, so it's going up. You can clearly see that it is interfacing with this, and you can also see it in there. So basically what is really cool about Applied Energistics is you can connect anything to any part of the network, and it all goes back to the controller, which is really handy. So it means we don't have to manually pipe everything back to the controller or to another pipe. You can just chuck it on in... A terminal or you can chuck it on a drive or a relay it doesn't really matter and every block also acts as a cable in itself um, along with every import bus and export bus also acting as a cable in itself okay looks like our ME wireless access terminal has been charged so let's give this one a crack and see how much power it takes just to do that it's taken 1k power um, just to move what is it, four items in there, so we need to be pretty careful with that one and maybe only use it for emergencies. But what I want to finish doing now is putting everything from the farm into our ME system, and I will be back once that is done. Alright, so we got all of that put in there. Now if we type in Essence, you can see we have 4,147 Essence Dust, 10 Week Essence, 22 Nature Essence, 2,806 Redstone Essence, 985 coal essence and 118 essence seeds. Now that is pretty impressive. You can't really complain with that at all. 
Um, so I think in between episodes, I'm going to set up this farm here to be making other things other than redstone and coal. I'll probably set up one making diamonds, not that we need them, but just for the sake of it. Now, basically, you just work your way up the tiers. I don't want to get too into it on camera making it because it's really tedious and time consuming. So if you want to find out more about it, maybe request a tutorial from me purely on Mine Factory Reloaded. I mean, not Mine Factory, oh, I guess Mine Factory Reloaded along with Magical Crops. Um, or you can just look up other tutorials on the internet. Next thing I wanted to do is put this in our, enemy, in our ME system. You can see we've got two diamond chests filled up with mob drops. Um, and a lot of that being spoils bag. So what I want to do is I want to automatically import that into our ME system and automatically export all the spoils bags into an autonomous activator and which, sorry, into an autonomous activator, which will open the spoils bags and put them into a chest for us, which will then be imported again into our ME system. To do this, we're going to need quite a bit of ME cable and our ME, uh, where are we? Basic import bus along with a precision export bus. I'm just going to grab all of them and hope for the best. Now what we want to do is we want to connect this here. We want to connect it like so by shift clicking on the chest. We want to pipe it up underneath here. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to pipe it up underneath. That's going to be way too hard for the moment. So I'm going to get that slab that I lost. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to get that slab back at all. Okay, hopefully we can access we can access our ME terminal all the way over here, which is very, very handy. This is the kind of stuff that it should be used for. Now we're going to pipe this over to the closest ME cable, which by the looks of it is probably just down here. So I'll sort that out and I'll cut back to when I'm done. There we are, I just hooked it up. That was yeah, that was that was horrible. I don't want to do that again. Um, I'll clean that up before next episode so that we can still use that other platform because I will just, where are we? I will just go back up on our elevator here and show you what it looks like now. It's pretty, pretty, um, unusable, but as you can see, it is slowly being imported into our ME system and we can speed this up by putting some more import buses on it and connecting them up with ME cable. Um, and there we go. This should be a lot faster now and should be able to keep up with all of the items that are in there because there are a lot of items in there at present. Now I'm not going to be able to put one on the bottom because I cannot shift click on the bottom of the chest. Right, so now this is importing all of that. It should be importing our spoils bag, which is handy. Now we need to set up the second part of it, which is the automating of the opening. Now this is pretty easy with a precision export bus, except what you really want is a fuzzy export bus, which I failed to think of when I made these. So I'm just going to I'll type it in here. We need a fuzzy, which is an advanced processor, of course, because a basic isn't enough and just a basic export bus. I'm pretty sure we can afford to do that. Now I'm just going to go chuck this down in our redstone furnace here and wait for it to cook up. Okay, so we have our advanced processor. Now all we need to do is put it with a basic export bus to make our fuzzy export bus. Now I think I'm going to set this machine up downstairs since we can put it right next to our ME system and easily get it exported and imported. Now what we need to do is we need a chest there, an autonomous activator facing the chest, opening it up there, and we need to import with our fuzzy import bus spoils bags. Now what we can do is match any which will import all of the spoils bags in here which will empty them into the chest but it doesn't seem to be working there we are okay sorry i set up the imports wrong there we go the spoils bags are being imported into there and they filled up already so what we need to do set up an import bus on the other side of the chest or rather just here get some me cable out of our system not gravel me cable thank you very much not close inventory me cable thank you very much hopefully we've got some of that left 43 of it that should be enough now what we can do is we can just put that back into our me system and the spoils bags are being emptied okay and i'll put another import bus on there so that it can keep up but i don't really think it's necessary now as you can see it is definitely exporting very very fast and we're getting a lot of stuff from it 
Now, I filled up another drive with 16K storage, but I don't think it's gonna last too long, to be honest, so we may, but we probably won't have to add some more drives. Let's just save it and see how long it lasts. And look at that, we're getting nether quartz from the spoils bags, which is amazing. Nether quartz is something that we do need quite a lot with, uh, quite a lot with our ME system, and I am a heavy applied and applied energy sticks user. Okay, so now we've emptied that out, we've fixed all that. Now I'm going to explain a little bit more of what I did last episode. I replace our love generators with magmatic dynamos. I like magmatic dynamos a lot more. I think they produce quite a lot more power as well. I was having a bit of struggle with all those. Um, lava generators before um, powering this and the ME system and it was either one or the other and it just didn't work at all. I also made this tank smaller because having the large tank was really confusing for the pipes and they didn't know where to pump the lava to or where to pump the lava from. And on top of that there just flat out was not enough lava so I added another row of crucibles and I upgraded them to redstone and to get, I mean not redstone, netherrack and to get netherrack you put lava into a stone barrel here and then you just right click it with redstone and that turns right into netherrack. It's really simple, that's why I didn't do it on camera because it would just would have been a bit of a waste of time. I also changed our cobblestone import to the crucibles, I changed that to item ducts because they are a lot faster and smarter than the transfer nodes and the export is fluid ducts now just because they're a lot faster and smarter than the transfer nodes. Um, over here I also have set up a completely separate generator to handle the ME system because the ME system is the most impart important part of our game at the moment and we cannot afford to lose it. I've also hooked it up here to our other magmatic dynamo so it gets more than enough power. It will never be solved of power at this rate unless we add a lot more to it. Okay, and over here we're just running the same kind of system and nothing too much more has changed to my knowledge. One more thing I wanted to do though is move this over here. I want to move this into the middle and put our smeltery on this side. Now this is a bit of a big task so I'm just going to do it and cut to when it's done. Okay so I've moved everything. I haven't built the smeltery yet but I just wanted to connect the deep storage unit back up to our ME system and should be interfacing now without a problem. There we are. It's working again. Not a problem. Okay, so I set up the smeltery now. I've set it up a lot smaller than we had it before because we simply do not need it that big. I didn't know anything about the mod before, but now I've kind of got my head around it. And this is pretty much all we're going to need to get it to work. Now, that's all I'm going to touch on Tinkerous Construct for this episode, but we're going to be getting into it pretty soon. We're going to make some pretty cool swords, some pretty cool um, axes and stuff like that pickaxes I mean but another thing I wanted to just mention before we go today is the fact that I have added some upgrades to our transfer node so it can mine the cobblestone a little bit faster send it over to our DSU to keep up with the very popular demand of cobblestone which is very rare in my experience so basically a speed upgrade is just some redstone and some gold and a mining upgrade is an iron pickaxe some iron and some lapis it's very 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 easy and very 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 helpful Okay guys, unfortunately that is all we have time for in today's episode. Next episode I will be working on automating all of our broken, crushed and dust into ores or at least ingots. Sorry, ingots or at least ores. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to go about automating that quite yet, but hopefully it can be done. I'll do my research in between episodes and what else I... Uh, what I will also be doing between episodes. Sorry, my, my voice. Not my voice, my vocabulary is just shocking today is one, setting up import buses on all of these chests here so they automatically go into our ME system, and two, changing all of our coal essence and redstone essence into other items. So we might end up growing iron, we'll probably end up growing some diamonds, and we'll also probably end up growing some glowstone. Okay, so until next episode, I am Cobain, this is my Sky Factory, and thank you very much for watching.